Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, the two richest men in the world, both encroached upon space. The founding of both entrepreneurs' companies is also not much different, with Bezos' Blue Origin founded just two years before Elon Musk's SpaceX. But despite being two years older, Blue Origin is still far behind SpaceX, not only in terms of production, but also SpaceX's engine specifications are completely superior to Blue Origin's. But how, specifically? Let's find out more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The development process of SpaceX's Raptor engine itself can be regarded as an engineering miracle within the industry. Its speed and frequent iterations are beyond the reach of competitors. Relative to almost any other large-scale engine development program in the last half century, Raptor's 29-month 100-engine milestone is an extraordinary achievement. To clarify, we can look at Blue Origin's BE-4, a methane liquid oxygen engine with design indicators similar to the Raptor. Blue Origin, back in 2015, proclaimed that the engines would be ready by 2017. However, as ULA CEO Tori Bruno said, everything in the BE4 program has taken far longer than planned. Why are they late? They're late because it's taken them longer to move through the test program and it's taken them longer to build the production engines than they planned. And why is that happening? It's happening because the testing is more complicated than they anticipated and because they allowed themselves we allowed ourselves as a program to have fewer test assets to work with than we originally planned, Bruno said. As a result, the engine is running four years behind as of August of 2021. Full-scale BE4 testing began 16 months before Raptor in October of 2017, but in the following four years, only nine prototypes have been manufactured and tested. Meanwhile, as of May of 2021, SpaceX is now building more than a dozen Raptors, including prototypes and flight engines every month. Which begs the question, how has BE4 survived over a decade of failure? Over seven years have passed since Blue Origin and ULA first announced their plans to work together on spaceflight in September of 2014. Bezos had invested heavily in the BE4 engine development, needing it to power his own large rocket which would become known as New Glenn. Having ULA as a customer would help offset some of those costs. The BE4's delayed development has increasingly been the subject of keen interest. This is partly because ULA has been working on its new Vulcan rocket for a number of years, and that rocket is important to the future of the company. The military is also eager for this delivery as ULA is a primary provider of launch services to the Department of Defense alongside SpaceX. They hope Vulcan provides lower cost launch services with engines manufactured in the United States. The US military committed $255.5 million to the BE-4 development as part of the launch services deal, which was funded by taxpayers. Despite that, Blue Origin has delayed delivery again and again. And as a result, many people are starting to think about the technical feasibility of using Raptor engines for the Vulcan rocket. The only high-thrust methane liquid oxygen engine we're aware of that's more developed than the BE-4 is SpaceX's Raptor engine. So if ULA were to seek another engine to replace Blue Origin's BE-4 with minimal alterations to its existing hardware, Raptor would be a good choice. The problem is, the entire Vulcan rocket has been designed around an engine that matches the BE-4. With the thrust deficit of the Raptor, they would need to add in a third engine, or resize the whole launcher, invalidating a lot of their development work so far. But adding an extra engine means completely redesigning the thrust structure and plumbing, and at the very least a complete overhaul of the avionics and control system. And with altered mass and thrust on the core, would the current design for the strap-on boosters still be valid? Even if it's all technically possible, it's not feasible from a company politics perspective. In other words, it's way too late in the development cycle for a changeover to now be viable. It could be done, of course, but it would be more of a case of designing a new rocket and less of adapting the current Vulcan. Not only is it far behind in terms of production speed, but even when compared in terms of specifications, Blue Origin's engine is completely incomparable to SpaceX's. Blue Origin's engineers have been tossing and turning day and night to solve BE-4's problems for more than half a decade. Meanwhile, SpaceX has not only ramped up engine production to a dizzying speed, but also built many other upgraded versions. On its very first static fire in October, it appears that SpaceX's first finished Raptor 2 prototype has narrowly stolen BE-4's crown, briefly generating main combustion chamber pressures of 321 bar and as much as 245 tons of thrust. But Raptor 2 wasn't so lucky, like BE-4, 
It apparently exploded before completing its first test. While not quite as successful as the first static fire campaign of a full-scale Raptor 1 engine, which survived several tests, the first Raptor 2 prototype's early demise is still a routine part of engine development and is the start of a process that should ultimately produce a super heavy booster with 50% more thrust than the next most powerful rocket ever flown. If the Raptor 2 prototype also made it to 330 bar, it would have produced around 252 tons of thrust, 12% more than its Raptor 1 predecessor, which is pretty great of a development. SpaceX is currently conducting a series of tests with Raptor 2, and according to data provided recently by Musk, Raptor 2 now operates routinely at 300 bar main chamber pressure. One day, we will see a Starship with all these engines, and I hope it'll be soon. Really hope so. But Raptor 2 isn't the last version of SpaceX's engine. In the future, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor engines to power the Super Heavy first stage and 9 on the Starship upper stage for initial test flights. So for each flight that either ends with a missed catch, a fiery landing, or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company will lose 42 Raptor engines, which is a staggering amount of engines both in terms of cost and lost production time. So reusability is a key aspect. Musk has said each engine needs to be capable of flying up to a thousand times to support the ambitious operations of Starship, which is a major challenge. The most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew up to only a few dozen times each. As a result, a new engine will be born. Musk himself has hinted at this before. Raptor 2 has significant improvements in every way, but a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary. And it won't be called a Raptor. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to congratulate us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ring the bell so you won't miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. From all of us here on the team, thank you so much. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.